In this video, I will show you how to apply a clamped boundary condition to a model. Here, I wish to clamp one end of my beam. There are several ways to apply directional and rotational boundary conditions to a model. The idea is to specify a set of nodes, a face, or a part of the model, and then apply a boundary condition to this region. In this video, I will use a command that lets me specify a face of my model by picking a node on that face and then use the BC motion command to clamp this face. Instead, I could have used a geometry, a coordinate, or a set of nodes to pick this face, but this is the easiest way to do it. We begin by typing geometry seed node, preceded by an asterisk. The manual window should now have brought up the entry for this command. This command has four inputs. It has an ID, which is always required, then two node ID inputs, and a cutoff angle. You only need to give two node IDs if the first is on the edge of a face. The cutoff angle lets you specify the angle between two faces that defines the boundary of the geometry. By default, this is 45 degrees. We will give this geometry ID 1. To find the node that lies on the face we wish to seed, press the Select Nodes button or the keyboard shortcut N. Make sure to select a node that is on the right face. This will be easier if we activate the grid. Press View, and then Element Faces and Element Lines, or the keyboard shortcut 2. After you highlight the node, the node ID will read in the bottom window, tabulated together with the manual window, if that is open. Note this ID and type it into the geometry command. Since this node is on the edge of the surface, we must also specify a second node that lies on another edge. Repeat the same procedure. For this model, the default cutoff angle of 45 degrees suffices. We are now ready to apply a boundary condition to this face. Begin by typing asterisk BC motion. You will now see that the manual window has brought up the entry for this command. All your available inputs are shown here, as well as a short description. The BC motion command is one of the key commands in any simulation. It lets the user apply constraints and motions to a model. Constraints are specified by translational or rotational coordinate axes, and motions are specified by functions defining acceleration, velocity, or displacement. We are looking to constrain this end of the model in all rotational and translational directions. First, we need to give the BC motion command an ID. The solver reports data for each BC motion command and you will see this output in the prescribed.out file where each command is listed by its command ID. Optionally, you may title your command by using quotation marks, in which case this title will show up in the prescribed file instead of the ID. Let's not bother with the title for now and give it ID 1. Next, we need to specify entity type. This tells the solver how one intends to specify the region where the command will apply. We have specified the geometry, and so we type the letter G for entity type. What follows is the geometry ID, 1, and applied constraints. We constrain the face from all motion by specifying translational constraint XYZ. All nodes within our geometry are now completely bound in space, so rotation is also prohibited. The rotational constraint option is only allowed for rigid bodies that have a constant center of mass axis. Press Save, and the object tree to the left will be updated with the new feature. You might want to highlight the new geometry to make sure that it looks correct. It might be easier to see if you change the color so that it doesn't match your model. 
One end of our model is now clamped. In the next video, we will be applying a load to the top of the beam.